Hey guys, don't adjust your screen. This is not a repeat. It is July 3rd. I'm almost in that teacher mode where you forget what day of the week it is and you have no idea what day of the month it is. It is Tuesday, July 3rd. So it is, of course, Teacher Tip Tuesday. And if you joined us last week, um, you know that this is a two-part session. And last week we talked about the DIY digital breakouts. And today, as promised, we are going to move on and talk about digital badge tracking. This is going to be a game changer for student motivation, student recognition, and really neat and fun ways to encourage your kids to meet those small goals and accomplish those tasks and really have fun doing it. If you want to follow along in this presentation so that you can click the links on all the things I have here for you, you can type in bit.ly backslash breakout and badges and you will have this presentation at your fingertips and you can get all the copies of the templates and you can click on the links and really put it to its best use. So um, as always, if you need more, pop on over to any of these links. If you click on these um, pictures here, it will take you to my SLY teaching page where you can see all of our Teacher Tip Tuesdays uh, from the summer posted there. Uh, you can also check out Ms. Shonker's class Facebook page where you can see um, actual footage and things that I have done with my students in class. Uh, check me out on Twitter. Lots of tweets from things that we do inside my classroom. And like I said last week, this is a presentation that I will be presenting on July 13th at the KY Go Digital um, Southern Kentucky Conference. So if you are not in the area, no fear, you can pop on Twitter and check out the KY Go Digital hashtag so that you are not left out. All right. Remember last week we talked about DIY breakouts. Um, I'm not going to go through that again, uh, but you can always go to my SLY teaching page um, and watch this video from last week and uh, learn how we created these digital breakouts. So today let's start talking about badge tracking. Now, um, I was at a conference with my husband last summer and I knew that I was going to have access to a lot more technology moving into my new grade in my new school uh, where I was this past year. And I was really excited about that. And I also knew that I wanted to use Google tools in my classroom to help students in not only their engagement, um, I found it also curved behavior issues at my previous school, um, but I really wanted students to be able to master those tools so they could have a higher level of creation ability within their assignments and have a higher level of thinking involved in their assignments. And I knew that if I made them masters and proficient in these G Suite tools, that they would be able to take it to the next level and go above and beyond with the things that they were creating in classroom. Um, so ways that you can use digital badge tracking, tracking any type of classroom achievement, whether it's 100% made on a spelling test, maybe you're talking about math fact fluency and achieving certain levels or multiplication facts and things like that, um, talking about tracking AR points and I mean just literally anything you're doing in your class you could almost assign a digital badge for it and the great thing about this is that it really increases student motivation because when a student earns their badge in my classroom we always take a picture in front of their new badge that they've earned we tweet it out and then at morning meeting uh, we celebrate those students and so they get their picture put up on the big screen in front of the whole school and it's really a big deal for those kids to be acknowledged. And this is also a great way, you know, earning digital badges for being, you know, um, savvy with G Suite tools. That may be something that um, some kids who are less strong in academics, they may be able to navigate, you know, a, a G Suite tool and, and know their way around a computer. So that's going to give them a little taste of success when they might not be having success elsewhere. And then you're going to see that motivation flow throughout and they're going to continue to work harder and strive for excellence. So we're tracking classroom achievements. I'm also going to show you today how to use Flippity 
that's flippity.net. I'll take you there in just a moment uh, to create your tracking sheet because it does it all for you. They have a template set up and literally you just enter in your kids' names and a couple of links and you're good to go. And I'm going to show you how I created my own badges using Google Draw. So they are customized and they're exactly um, what I wanted them to look like, very specific to um, the skills that they were doing with each uh, badge that they would earn. All right. <clears throat> So this is where I started. This was kind of my end game for the G Suite tools that I wanted my kids to master. And I decided that um, when I taught first grade, we were so excited, you know, getting our kids implemented using G Suite tools. We had a hashtag, mini Google masters. And um, so moving up to fifth grade, I was like, man, I really, you know, I really want these kids to master these G Suite tools. So uh, we now have the hashtag making Google masters. You can always look up uh, mini Google masters and see some of the things we did with our first graders um, on Twitter. But I decided that any time a child earned a badge this year and any type of post that I did uh, that incorporated students and technology and using those G Suite tools, I always hashtagged it making Google Masters. So these were our making Google Masters badges that they could earn. And these were the things that I wanted them to be able to do by the end of the year. Um, I think we covered all but two of these simply just because we ran out of year. Um, but a lot of them, I would say the kids were absolutely proficient and distinguished in using these tools each and every day in our class. I was really proud of the growth that they made. Um, and I was thinking back, you know, trying to tell myself, okay, my incoming fifth graders are not going to be as well versed. So I've got to rewind it back, you know, how you have to do at the beginning of each year. Um, but I'm excited to continue this uh, this year as well. So how to make these badges. I'm sorry, things that you can track with these badges, rather. Sight words. Um, when I taught first grade, it was always a big deal. You know, are you on list A, list B, list C? Do you have 100 words, 200 words? You could use badges for sight words. Uh, mastering vocabulary. So those of you in like um, primary or intermediate, you know, if they have um, vocabulary assessments that they do uh, weekly, you know, they can earn badges for that. Tracking AR points, you know, instead of a, a little sticker tape on your wall, give them a digital badge, you know, and and celebrate them and, and you know, let them be acknowledged for, um, you know, the goals that they're achieving. If you use uh, programs like IXL and Compass and things like that, if they pass certain levels or reach certain benchmarks, you know, let them earn a digital badge for that as well. Talking about standards mastery, those of you who teach just, you know, based off of your standards, when you assess them and they have, you know, if they've mastered the economic standard for social studies, give them an economics digital badge so they can show, you know, I have got my skills down in economics. And also for those of you who do WIGs, wildly important goals uh, with your kids and different goal settings whether it be words per minute read or whether it be, you know, behavior goals and things like that, you can use digital badges to track and motivate students for all of those things. All right. How do you create a digital badge? What I did first was create what I wanted my badge to look like. And I would suggest, um, I used Canva for mine, but I would suggest having them end up in a Google drawing. So I'm going to share with you guys here. This is a folder and it contains all of my digital badges that I created um, last summer. And you're going to see there are several badges that my students could earn and they all look very similar because it was very easy just to change the title and then put in a nice new background picture. And so these were the badges that my students could earn this year in the Making Google Masters badge tracking. So I've got all of these badges here and it's most important, you know, you can create these in Google Draw and just insert a picture, put a text box over top, boom, you're done. Super simple. So my forms badge, I have it pulled up here because there's something very important and the reason you need to be in Google Drawing, and, and this is kind of a walk around that I found, is, you know, if you put these digital badges, they're kind of considered a picture when you get to Flippity. And so you need to have a URL 
for your picture. Well, I just had a regular picture from Canva, of course, no URL. And so I found the workaround where if I had my image here in Google Drawings, you can simply go to File and Publish to the Web, and it will give you a URL that you can use to share this image. And that is an important step that you need when you get to Flippity. So first things first, you are going to create all of your badges like I did here. Just save them in a folder all together and you know you can design them any way you want. This is where the fun part comes in. Um, so design your badges. You know if you're doing AR and you've got you know 10, 20, 30, whatever, 100 points or if you're doing standards based badges and you know they've mastered main idea or they've mastered uh, you know context clues or text features, you know any of those things you can make badges for. So, after you create those images in Google Draw, you're going to file and publish to the web. And I'm just going to show you an example. This is what <clears throat> my display looks like for my kids when they look at the Flippity. So they see all of the badges available here and then their names would appear down here. Of course, mine is empty right now because I don't have any students on my roster. It's middle of the summer, um, but their names would appear. And when you click on their name, it would pull up and show just the pictures of the badges that they have earned. So other students can see other children's progress and that might be a motivator, you know, hey, my friend has four badges and I only have two. Let me get on the ball with that. And um, just a really great way that Flippity organizes it and keeps it all straight. I post this in the about section of my Google Classroom. That way it is always available for my students. They can work on it anytime they're finished and it's very easily accessible. So once you have your badge created and make sure in that Google drawing you hit file and publish to the web. Okay, that needs to be your very first step. Then you are going to create a Flippity. Now, before I blow your mind here, those of you who's never used Flippity before, it's basically a way that they take a Google Sheets and they are formulated to do certain things. Now, we could probably spend a whole Teacher Tip Tuesday on Flippity, so don't get like squirrel when we go to this page. Um, today, we're just going to focus on the badge tracking. So let's take a peek at what Flippity looks like. When you go to Flippity, here are all these possibilities that you could do. I mean, we use the name picker all the time for all sorts of stuff. Bingo, spelling words, Mad Libs, certificates, all the stuff. But today, we are going to focus on the Flippity Badge Tracker. And so you're just going to click where it says Template right here. And it's going to force you to make a copy. That way you can edit it and do with it what you please. So once you make this copy, it has very specific... Um, input that you can put in. So let's talk about what each one of these are. Um, the first one says badge image URL. Remember earlier when we went to file and publish to the web and we got that URL? That's where you're going to put this in. Then you title your badge. You know, let's say we're doing, um, you know, language arts badges. So you have your URL for a main idea badge. And so you would title it main idea badge. And then you might put a little description. Um, I rocked main idea. I know what the story is all about. And then you simply put in your students' names. Right here where it says badge link, I'm going to show you in a moment on my own example. Um, I put a link to, I guess, sort of an assignment so they knew what to do to earn that badge. That way, this was something they could work on independently because, again, you know, it's always posted in our Google Classroom in the About section. So if they were at home and they wanted to work on a Google badge for my class, they would have an instruction right here that would tell them exactly what to do so that they could earn that badge. All right, let's tidy up here a little bit. All right, get rid of that copy. And remember, here is um, our folder with all our badges. All right, back on track here. So I'm going to show you the example of my Flippity that I use for my badge tracking. <clears throat> this is a document, and of course, you know, it has all the URLs that link me to my Google Drawings. It has the title of each bag, each badge, so you know they can earn docs, slide sheets, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This could be AR points, it could be math fluency facts, 
anything. I did make all of those badges available. And then I just gave them a little description, you know, use docs to type and share ideas and so on and so forth. And then this is where I was talking about you can give them kind of directions and what they need to do to successfully complete that badge. All right. Maybe it's just that they need to upload a screenshot of their AR points if you're tracking AR or, you know, anything like that. So if they were to click on this, it would take them to the directions. And of course, um, my student names would be there at the bottom. Once I get my roster uh, this summer, I'll put in everybody's names. So this is how my kids earn their Google Docs badge. Like literally, they just had to follow the directions and show that they could um, do this independently. And, you know, it should turn out looking a certain way once they're done. And I told them how to, you know, let me know um, that they had completed it. And if they did all those steps, correctly then I would simply go back in here and so let's say this was a student's name so we'll just put my name and I would literally if they did it correctly you just put an X here and there you go you're done so if you go to this second tab right here that says get the link and you click the URL it will actually take you to the flippity and you will be able to see the students names You'll see the badges that are available, like I showed you before. And then maybe your name should pop up here and you should be able to click on it. It might not have saved correctly, but you get the gist. You see how that works. Um, so I guess I, no, I guess I need to file publish to the web perhaps. And then we'll see. All right. It is raining here again this week, guys. I think Tuesday is the day for rain here in Kentucky, apparently. All right. So that is how you track your students' badges. So you put their name in here, give them their mark when they complete it, and then you'd be able to go and see your whole roster and click on the names to see the badges that everyone had earned thus far. All right. So... That is all I have for you guys today for badge tracking. Um, again, like I said, this is a presentation that I'm going to be doing at the KY Go Digital on July 13th. So if you're looking for more teacher tips, absolutely go to Twitter and follow that hashtag. It will be super helpful to you. Um, if you guys have any requests, um, I know I feel like for me, summer's kind of winding down. We're going to start back um, to PD at the end of July. So if there's anything that you are itching to know before school starts back, please message me on SLY Teaching, um, tweet me on Twitter, and let me know if there's something specific you would like to see before the end of summer. I am planning to do an episode um, all about open house and how I run my uh, open house signups to collect student and parent information uh, to easily, you know, organize transportation for kids and volunteers for classrooms and things like that. So if there's something else that you would like to see on a future Teacher Tip Tuesday. We are running out of Tuesdays this summer, folks. So there will only be a couple more episodes. Um, June 30th is when I go back to PD. So I will be focusing all of my efforts on getting my classroom ready. Um, I'll probably do a big classroom reveal for you guys over on SLY Teaching on Facebook uh, because we have a pretty unique classroom. We are all flexible seating and very Starbucks-ish like in our classroom. So stick around and join us for more. Again, if you have any questions, or you need any help, please do not hesitate to reach out. I hope you guys have a great Tuesday. See you later.